It's just a dwarf wouldn't write it that way. I know that. He wouldn't just be like, I just keep treasure behind there for adventurers, lol. <laughs> 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 Hello, everybody. My name is Yojimbo XD, and welcome to the channel. And today we return to episode 5 of Sea of Bones, a 5th edition homebrewed game of Dungeons and Dragons. This is a homebrewed 5th edition game of D&D. We'll be using Roll20 for the duration of the campaign. For those who don't know, Roll20 is a website that is used to host a variety of role-playing games like Dungeons and Dragons, and has the tools we need to play a tabletop game online when meeting in person just isn't possible. And if you ever want to see us live, you can check us out here on YouTube or over on Twitch. Links are in the description. All right, let's get into the video. Hello, beyond venue and derriere to Sea of Bones, 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons game written and hosted by me, Matt yeah. Prolikowski. Long time viewers will be disappointed to learn I will no longer petition PepsiCo or my stage direction bit. Apparently, like a middle-aged man reclaiming his youth and hitting on a 21-year-old at the bar, I was cringe. If we ever do get a primary sponsor, they can pay for a spot here. The last time we set sail with our sordid scamps, we were deep underground in the Underdark on a secret mission from Scarlet DeRay, the former leader of Saltspire, to prevent Black Coin Cult reinforcements from joining the inevitable battle for Saltspire. While in the Underdark, they met a unique group of Myconids and Formians living in symbiosis. However, their fragile peace was threatened by the disruption of their ecosystem by giant spiders and a recent lack of clean water. The party made quick work of the spiders despite Underdark interference with their magical abilities and found a ruck slide blocking access to a natural water source. Our heroes found an altar to Umberly, a sea goddess, and deep in a pool, they found a large stone slab covering something. Kaz happily dove into the pool but sensed something serious would happen when he moved the slab and it might not be good. Players, if you want to introduce yourselves, we can begin. All right, Willie, say hi. Hi. Willie Doolittle, our errant wayward fighter. Kaz, you want to say hey? Hey, it is Kaz, short for Kasurga. Our air storm sorcerer, Jack. Hi there, folk of the internet. I am Jack Knight Shadow. I will be one of your warlocks. Jareth, say hey. Yes, hello, I am Jareth, the Verdan warlock. And Sibo. Hello, everyone, this is Sibo. I see the camera's panned on me. I'm your resident bard, entertainer, and random guy of knowledge. So, for for our party to remind them, they had been in an Underdark cavern. Kaz had jumped into the water and found a tomb. And Kaz, you were about to lift the tablet when you sensed that that may not be what you wanted to do. So what would you like to do? Well, I sense that I don't want to lift this tablet. Does the tablet have any writing on it? So you're saying it's situated like an elaborate bathtub drain. That would be a reasonable consideration. I mean, you don't know that, but if you wanted to actively search the sarcophagus, you could with perception check. 14? You don't think that Jack is on the right path, that it's probably not a drain. It definitely okay. seems to be connected in some way to the altar. That's what's over here behind you all. There was a small shrine to Umberly there, but beyond that, you're not really sure how they're connected. All right, well, I'm going to swim up to the surface and tell the party. So there's like a sarcophagus underneath there. I can push it open, but it feels not right. You also haven't really gone much this way. There's a hole here and a hole here and what appears to be like a narrow stone walkway over to here. So you guys haven't been that way yet either. It's well, get to I'm that. not going to waste my cast of fly, and I'm going to I'm going to dive on in and do the uh, the safest swimming route for myself. Sebo, in his whimsicalness, will plug his nose and go, "All right, cannonball! Here we go!" I'm swimming over here. Do a, I mean, you could uh, have me do like an athletic yeah, swim. Athletics, and it's that's a low DC because you obviously went the safe route. You're a little wet, but fine. That leaves Willie on the other side, and Kaz still swimming in the water. I'm assuming he's just treading water at this point. Uh, so we do not want to open this. I'll open it. Open it, it'll be funny. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah. You're elemental people, aren't you curious by nature? So Kaz is going to swim back down and open it? Well, they want to know what's in it, so. Yeah, sure, let's blindly swim down to the dark of a fetid water hole and just open up a random sarcophagus. I'm sure there's it treasure is. and everything you could have ever dreamed of inside. Give me a strength check. Could I use athletics as I'm underwater using or my body. Sure, you can get a bonus from skill like athletics or acrobatics. You push with all of your might against the stone slab, but it barely budges. However, upon barely budging, you also hear or feel a ripple or a click through the water. Oh. And that's when there is a rock slide. 
Okay, Willie, Jareth, Jack, and Sebo each take 13 damage from a rock slide. Sebo, because he has the highest passive perception other than Kaz, who's in the water. Sebo, you note that the Shrine of Umberly is now different. In what manner? The stone tablet that the little icon was situated on is now cracked. Oh boy. So I'd swim up to the surface. Hey, everyone all right? Oh, aside from the bruises from the rock slide, not that for some reason decided to attack me directly, I, I'm otherwise fine. My head's leaking. Did you even open that box or did you just trip something that they didn't mean to? What? No, I don't there. think the I don't think the cave in was at all tied into what I was doing. Anyway, uh, anyone else uh, a bit stronger than myself might be able to help move this thing. It's no, uh, no, I'm out of here. I'm just going to leave. No, no, no. I'm going to the end of the tunnel right here. <laughs> Jared, Jared is just like, I'm out. Peace. <laughs> you can have your fun with your rock slides. Sure, I'll help. You want to give us an athletics check, Willie? Can I give the helping action to give him yep. advantage? Absolutely. I'm also going to inspire Willie. I pull out my device and I begin to strum. Lift as he needs a notch back, or else we're gonna get a rock pack. All right. Willie slides the stone tablet out of the way. Uh, water rushes to fill the sarcophagus. However, inside is a another stone triangle. They're the collectible of the game. We found three of 187. I want to get the skin at the end. All right, Kaz, uh, you and Willie swim up to the surface, having recovered your piece of the triangle. In the turn order movement scheme, it would be Jareth's turn to move. I already did. I'm just waiting for everyone to get right back. Away. On my go, I'm moving up to Jareth. I see that he's bleeding a little bit, and I'm going to cast Cure Wounds through my loot on him. I'm going to use my last charge on my loot for Cure Wounds for myself. This tunnel appears to just mostly collect the mildew and extra damp air from the waterfall, so there's nothing in this cavern. Sibo and Kaz, I sent you messages on Discord. Oh, guys, come over here quick, look! This is where they would get their water. The Mykonids. We have to find where the plug up is. I'll investigate around looking for a potential source of the blockage. Well, so there's... this room itself is intact. And at least in this room, it's very damp and there's moss and mildew. So the Mykonids probably can come in here and harvest the moss and mildew, bring the moisture with it back to their colonies. So you might even infer that this tunnel may even lead back to the Mykonids somehow. There's clearly something here that is an issue. This area is fine. We need to make sure this tunnel down to them is clear. Oh, okay. So it's not damp or anything here? So like this is no, how it's it supposed is. to look? It is. That's, it yeah. Is. The, it's... the room looks the way it's supposed to. That's what keyed you in. You were like, oh, look, it's wet. It's damp. It's dark. It's perfect for mushrooms. Oh, uh, it appears that this is their harvesting zone. So clearly something is stopping them from getting in this way. What? I'm oh, already crap. down the hall. Cass, <laughs> wait up. We have the tiniest legs out of the whole group. We encounter an intersection. Uh, any local doubles nearby? We could use the directions. You could make a an active insight check or perception, perhaps, to give you some clues on where to go. Sibo, these tunnels appear long since abandoned. However, clearly traffic goes this way, and most of the traffic goes down this central tunnel. It looks like <laughs> this tunnel also probably has not seen traffic a lot in a long time. Well, it looks like this over here, Kaz, a little less traveled through. It doesn't look like there's much going on over here. But down this way, I think we're on the muddy. We go down here. You can see like stonework or something. Is that right? All right. Yes. Yeah. So first the thing everybody encounters is that, which is a very ornate stone door. The twists and turns of the tunnel slowly wind their way to a large ornate stone door. The door appears old, having been here for many decades at least, and someone put a considerable effort into the carvings. In particular, you note four pyramidal sockets about the size of the stone tablets you've been finding. Real quick, I'm going to move you guys over there to show you this is what you see on the door. So yeah. you see that on the door. Further ahead, you spot an area that once served as a foundry, an anvil long since silenced, along with pillaged crates fill what was once the main forge work area. A distinct burnt and sulfurous smell lingers in the air near the furnace. Further back, you can glimpse the smith's living quarters. Sibo, you find a journal near the foundry right there. I uh, tell, do, um, Jareth. Do you have Undercommon or Dwarven? 
I have Comprehend Languages, which I will then cast on myself so I can now read it. The journal is written in Durger and basically yeah. describes a smith who lived here. One passage sticks out to you in particular. Those damn surface dwellers constantly coming down here and trying to get me to do work for them. I'll show those bastards. I'll build a door and a lock so complicated they'll never come through. The remaining portion of the journal is mostly the smith and his complaints about surface dwellers and uh, <laughs> notes regarding the forging of the lock as well well as a treatise on a special warhammer called the Forge Master's Wrath that a skilled blacksmith could likely use to recreate that weapon. Oh my, this is a plethora of knowledge. Jareth, you gotta come down here. What you got? Look at this, it's written in Durger. I mean, obviously you can read Durger, right? I mean, come on, it's a rudimentary at best. In a few minutes, I could read Durger. I have to prepare. You just don't know these things? Like, well, what do you, no, what do you what, mean? What are you talking about? The study of languages is a subtle art. You gotta put on some chill synth wave. You gotta relax. You got to set the mood right. It takes 10 minutes. Oh, I understand. Well, it's essentially, it's the ravings of this. He talked about making stuff and he made this door, that big one over there. And I think the puzzle pieces will take care of it. And then if we do that, there's like magical items back there. I promise. Well, it sounds like you already have it figured out. Why don't you take the lead, professor? In your nosing around, Kaz, I'll send it to you first. You were able to obtain these treasures. Where'd he find these? As he searched the living quarters, uh, he was walking around in there while you guys were discussing the book uh, and whatnot. And Jack was just walking back to see Kaz collecting a small cachet of loot. We need our man with the notebook. Hey, JC. Uh, let's see what the rest of these guys are doing. We're coming. I'm rummaging through everything that Kasurgo like presented. I'm just like, oh, like, check. oh my God, this is neat. Yeah, and I just yeah. kind of like identify it and toss it to the side, like in a, into a pile after I identify it. So I'm just making I love sure. the idea that there's just this pile of stuff and Sibo is there just sifting through and you hear like, ding, dong, ching, ching. He's just like, ooh, look, a helmet of vision. Ding, ding, throwing stuff <laughs> around behind him. Ping, 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 ping. Did you guys huh. happen to find any more of those triangle things? I think we need one more, right? We have you also three. have not went back to discuss with the Myconids and the Formians either. We haven't fixed the water problem yet, so why would we? Are you done yeah. with the inventory? Well, unless we, you want me to cast Identify on that door and figure out what that deal is, if you wanted to know more of the history of it and just, like, what it means. Well, it, I can tell you about the door, Jareth. The door. Remember that journal I picked up? The dwarf made it. Okay, and what's behind it? It's a dwarven door. I told you. Treasures. Kind of There's all market. kinds of treasures. No, why would someone specifically write it like that? They usually say, oh, I keep this behind the door. Jareth, you are dubious of Sibo's explanation about treasures behind the door. Yes, that I... Like yeah, it's all. way too vague. It's just a dwarf wouldn't write it that way. I know that. He wouldn't just be like, I just keep treasure behind there for adventurers, lol. <laughs> 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 and that's exactly how Sibo would relate it. Like he yeah. said it like that. <laughs> like you know? dwarves just don't write books that way. Yeah, so Sibo's obviously <laughs> lying to you. Yeah. I, I want you to look me in the eye. Is there anything of value behind that door? Or you just want to open the door and find out? Last time somebody tried to open something, rocks fell on me. First of all, I didn't open it, so there's no connection to the rocks and that opening. You were touching it. Fine. Last time somebody touched something, rocks fell on me. <laughs> I walk up and touch the door. Did you have your gloves on or off? I don't uh -oh. wear gloves. Oh, nothing happens. Do you put your gloves on? I don't have gloves. I hand what? you a set of leather gloves. They're too small made for a child. Made for a child. <laughs> I put each glove on my index finger on each hand. You touch the door and nothing happens. Wow, you really did some science there. All right, I'll put my gloves back on. <laughs> All right, so straight south. Kaz, you know that this is the hallway that led you down to the Myconid colony. What did we miss? Well, uh, well, we got to go talk to the Myconids. Matt, are these tunnels that went this way, do these keep going up this way? Or these terminate? They do, yeah. Oh, so we haven't gone that way. Huh. It's literally the only way we haven't gone yet, and somebody said we don't have all the triangles yet. That doesn't yet. loop back around to where we were. Right. So yeah. it's so there's one of two options. Either it's up there, or the Mykonids have one. Yeah, so why not check both? You guys are at the northern tunnels, if you'd like to explore. Oh, Cass, where do you want to go? Left or right? Which way does, does the air smell less foul? Uh, all good adventurers go left. Maze pattern. Just hug the left wall. What lair have we stumbled upon? Nothing. It's empty tunnels. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> really? Jareth had complained to the gods that he wanted a dungeon crawl. So the gods brought you a dungeon crawl. God damn it, Jerry. This is entirely your fault. Except that's not my name at all. 
But no one calls you by your name but the DM. Yeah. Kaz calls you JC. I have three <laughs> names and you still somehow <laughs> manage to come up with more for me. That's fine. When they finally arrest me and they have to read off all my street names, it'll be hilarious. All right. I'm just gonna <laughs> to my... give you guys a reminder, since you're coming back into these areas, uh, there's the Formian worker. There's the queen of the Formians. And then there's the Mykonids. You see, when you return to the Mykonid and Formian colonies, the Formians are rapidly chittering and moving around. You see dozens of the Formian workers now. The Formians have left a crystal cluster right there in plain sight. It's about the size of a grapefruit or a softball. Probably weighs about two to three pounds and obviously is emanating immense magical power. You see that one of the more larger round-based Mykonids is releasing small aerial-based spores that are now floating up the tunnel you had previously come from. You'd almost guess these are some sort of water harvesting spores or of some kind. The Myconids, for your efforts, also bring you a collection of trinkets that Myconid. they have gathered from their work. I'll post that to Discord and to roll 20. And the Myconids present you within one of those treasures. It's... Is it our fourth story? Stone. Yes. I will move you all to the smith door here. Four. There are your four puzzle pieces, and you all should have control of the puzzle. Okay, it's off now. I haven't even finished writing down the loot, and you guys are already sitting here solving the puzzle. <laughs> Willie and Kaz put the door together, and the door opens to reveal a tunnel leading further forward. The passages continue seemingly infinitely, but after several more miles, you realize the path has begun to slope upwards. You move gradually higher through the tunnels until you enter a large cavern. Inside this cavern is a shaft at the center, which, if you strain, you believe you can see the sky again, finally. You pause briefly to catch your breath before spotting an opening on the other side. After following this tunnel for several miles, you find a much smaller cavern, about 15 feet wide, with a large crack open in one wall. Through the gap, Skyreach Island is now visible. You are in a den several hundred feet above, overlooking the central stronghold. You also see a single narrow mountain on an island with a magic-appearing lighthouse, a warehouse near the fortress, and two ships docked there. You guys hear a crackling from, from the bag of holding. <laughs> yes, yes! Skyreach Island! This place once served as a fortress for a ruthless drow pirate who came to the surface after escaping his sacrifice at the hands of the priestesses of Loth. He built the fort and retreated into the tunnels before striking out at the armies who attempted to dislodge him. Waterdavian nobles eventually pooled their finances and hired adventurers out of Luskan to kill him. They held the fort for some time before changing hands to the cult now, obviously. I've heard it whispered the drow like to be tied up and mocked by a female sun elf who he called Mama. Such a strange people, the drow. I personally preferred the people of Rashomon the most. You can I the take area. the yeah. sending stone? And instead of keeping it in the bag, I, we, I can keep it on one of my pouches so Casey ever wants to talk. And I'm going to cast press a digitation so his face is on it. I love that. So the island, you are able to review and assess. Judging by your review of the area, you can tell that you have a few obvious objectives. One, disable the lighthouse. Two, neutralize the stronghold commander. Three, sabotage or destroy the sailing ships. And four, destroy the supply warehouse. To remind you, this is a stronghold of the Black Coin Church. They are using this as a supply base and for reinforcements and supplies to help protect Salt Spire. You're here to stop them from being able to reinforce Salt Spire. When you inevitably try to take over the island back, helping Scarlet DeRay retake the island, these reinforcements will not join the fight because you've stopped them. After another hike through tunnels, you come to a split in the cavern. Studying the passages briefly, you deduce that one path will lead to the stronghold. This is the route Big suggested that leads supposedly inside the Citadel's walls. The other path continues further down and would likely lead towards the warehouse, and at least one of the ships anchored below based on the scent of salt water and the sounds of crashing waves echoing further on. So you have two choices. You can enter inside the Citadel itself, or you can come out at the warehouse. So you have four objectives and two ways to approach your objective. Do you want a little rest first? 
And you can, yeah, you, I mean, obviously, if you want to rest either way, this cavern, there's no way they know you're coming. This cavern is safe. Okay. Party takes a long rest. You may do all your things. It's sometime after midnight. You're aware of that, but you probably need to spend some time deducing to tell any further from that. You guys wake up to the aroma of some freshly brewed cafe with some searing meats and perhaps some eggs if I had some left over. So everybody gets, what, two temporary hit points? When you finish a long rest, you yeah. can do the temporary hit points, yeah. One plus proficiency bonus. Or at proficiency two, it's three. Everybody gets three. Three temporary hit points. Uh, once food is all done, stamp out the fire, throw a little water on it, pack everything up, and we roll out of here. What does I the party want to do? Where are we at exactly on that map? The initial crack where you could see out, you were probably somewhere over here. Now you're somewhere probably over here, and the cave will lead either to here or to Wait, here. Where in the stronghold does the cave lead into? You're not exactly sure, but Biggs told you that it would be inside the primary, like, keep. We should neutralize the commander before we start yeah. destroying warehouses. And yeah. Ships. Agreed. That, go for the head. All right. You guys elect to go through the stronghold. If we're going to put a stop to a cult, you, you know what they say. Cut the head off the snake. And I don't remember the rest, but yeah, that's and, what you do. Cut off the head of the snake and then scream in terror as two more head grows back. Tunnel winds its way into a very narrow crevice. With athletics or acrobatics checks, you can maneuver your way through that crack. What about those of us who are small? You have advantage. So if I have to do it, then I'm casting guidance on myself and anybody else who wants it. Please. Hey, Kaz, no problem. <laughs> Jareth has no problem. 21 from Sebo. Jack, you squeeze through no problem. 13, you're good. All right, everybody makes it through. Once through, you find yourself in the back of a root cellar, surrounded by presumably much of the foodstuffs of the Citadel. At the far side of the root cellar are stairs leading up into the fortress. And then you come up from the root cellar into this stairwell here. So this room, for those who stepped out of the stairwell, is obviously the main chapel. You see an altar here with prayer elements. It also appears to be the primary dining area for some of the main church leadership, or maybe there's some sort of service that goes on here. You're not quite sure, but it's a table with food, and you see that there is a very ornate gold, brass, bronze, silver, gem-stoned idol to walk in. Do we also see a thing? Looks like there's a creature there. You see a statue of a minotaur made of brass. But you did say about dried meats, correct? Yes, sir. There's plenty of dried meats down in the root cellar. I would have liked to have been able to grab a few. You can grab up to four country hams if you want. Sure. That's All right. Sack. Willie's got four country hams. I'm more concerned with what I could spy <laughs> over there with my little eye. I what? Oh, fuck! I, I'm like I ducking like down behind the windows. As Simbo muttered, oh, fuck, the <laughs> statue in the corner begins to clink and crack and move and begins to move towards you all. And I need initiatives. Because I grabbed the ham, isn't it? The after the ham! The brass bowl comes to life, animated by the sound of an intruder in the chapel at night, and it roars, intruders! Really, it is your turn. All right. Just hop over the benches like a fucking hurdler. Yeah, we're gonna have to roll athletic, see if I don't trip over a damn bench, or three. I would argue mm, with one acrobatics check, you could get onto the bench, and a second one, you could clear the second bench. In this case, you can choose. All right, you clear the first pew, and you fall prone on the second. Well, he could use half of his remaining movement to stand back up. Oh, okay. Is that your turn, Willie? Yep. All right, Kaz? All right, I'm gonna move over here. Kaz will walk behind the pews, looking at the metal minotaur, and he takes in a deep breath. You need to chill out. <sighs> and he lets out a gust of air as he uses frostbite. Matt has to make a con save. He fails. He takes two cold damage. On a failed save, the target has disadvantage on the next weapon attack roll. It makes before the end of its next turn. That is Cass's turn. All right, Sibo. Sibo pulls out his loot, gives it a strum, and he's going to bonus action, inspire Jareth. All right, cook in, dig in deep, and give this minute a look, yeah. And you are now magically inspired. Don't forget we use the pink dot as inspiration. If you have the pink dot, you have bardic inspiration. All right, and then for my standard action, Actually, you know what? I'll move here. I can see through the windows, right? Those things, the uh, cultists over there. You can see them through the windows, yeah. I then go, well, 
Surprise is out of the bag, gents. And shatter! And I cast shatter right there on top of the cultists. <laughs> All right. One cultist passes the save. One does not. So one takes 12 damage. The other takes six. And everything in that room is obliterated. So every piece of glass in that room is blown out like a bomb just went off. And one of the cultists wasn't awake before, but they are now. Is that your turn, Sebo? <laughs> That's it. Okay. So these two wake up and stand up, obviously not dressed, not ready, unprepared, but one cultist attack has, he attacks with both ends of his spear. He stabs at you and then tries to hit you with the blunt end. Misses, but hits with the blunt. You take seven bludgeoning damage. The (laughs) brass bulls both attack Willie, presumptively for his theft of ham. One swing out of the six hits Willie. You take five bludgeoning damage, Willie, and that is the monster's turn. Jareth. The coldest who's behind us. I'm going to drop a flaming sphere right in this doorway. We said we were going to make a token for that. Now I feel like a jerk. I'm sorry. Right? Well, then I'm going to immediately use it to hit him with it as well, but just keep it right where it is. He makes a dexterity saving throw. Yep, that's a hit. I did seven fire damage. And if I was standing, say, over here on these stairs, he wouldn't have line of sight of me, right? No, he would not. All right, dope. That is my turn then. Okay, Jack. Uh, D10 is going at somebody's face. Yep, that's a hit. 13. That is my turn. Okay, Willie. All right, so the one on the right. Now we pray. Is a miss. And second attack. That's a hit. And Willie did six damage to him with his second attack. Willie, anything else? Uh, That's all I can do. Okay, Kaz, your turn. Kaz sidesteps the cultists and he summons lightning from his body down his arm and uses a lightning whip to lash the Minotaur. He fails the save. It would stop there. It would take for six damage. So that was Kaz, now Sibo. I'm going to use old person. Ooh, on who? On this, on this one right here. He yeah. fails. That's my turn. Okay. Mob's turn. He fails his save. Hold person, so he's still held. This guy remind me of the flaming sphere. He takes damage if he ends his turn. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can he move through it? I'm gonna say yeah, they can, but they just have to make another reflex save to get through it. Yeah. So he passes his save and moves through. You'd still take half damage. <laughs> yeah. Roll your yeah. damage. So four. You would be the only person who can see a person who looks different than the rest of the cultists has come down the stairs. And that's that person right there. Can I burn my reaction to say reinforcements coming from the stairs over here? Sounds about six ish words. That's fair. So one cultist will attack Jack with spear, blunt and sharp. One miss and one hit. Pointy bit dealt five piercing damage. The first brass bull attacks Willie with two misses and a critical hit. So you take 12 total damage from the great axe swing. The second brass bull attacks Kaz with one hit, six slashing damage from the minotaur. And then the cultist attacks you with spear, blunt, and sharp. Both miss. And that's the mob's turn. Jareth, your turn. Well, since I can't see those people down the stairs, I'm going to just keep hitting this guy. He has to make another deck save. That's a bonus action. He fails his save, Jim. He'll take nine damage. You could do an additional d6 of damage to him, Jim. Oh, yes. Can I add his the inspiration? I didn't know that would work uh, for my thing. Well, there's the d6 then. Error. You burn the cultist to death. I'm going to Eldritch Blast this one then. So 22. Yep, and it does hit. six force damage. That's my I turn. Jack. There's this wonderful asshole in front of me who's now paralyzed. So I have advantage. That's a hit. Cool thing is this scythe is a melee weapon, so now the damage is a critical. Yep. Which means I gotta roll an extra d10. So 14 Beautiful. damage. Ooh, you cut him in half. Seriously, the best use of hold person ever. I will back my ass up to the door. And that's my turn. Okay. Now on to Willie. Hey, you wanna go next to me? That's a hit. Nice. All right, seven slashing damage. And let's do that again. That's a hit. The Minotaur is pretty beaten up now from the slashes of Willie's hand axe. So Willie's done? Yep. All right, Kaz, uh-huh. your turn. I'm just going to look at uh, everyone out of the cultists surrounding me and be like, well, it's time for me to jet out of here. And I'm going to just use my arms and swish in a semicircle. Winds are going to gust up, and I'm going to jump 10 feet straight into the air. And then with my boots, fly the rest of the way over here. And then I'm just going to look down at them and I'm going to aim for this spot right here. Shattering boom! 14 <laughs> of your damage. You kill that one. 
This one is near death. He's badly injured, and the Minotaur makes his save. All right, <laughs> Zebo, your turn. I go over here, stand underneath Kaz. Kaz, that's not how you do it. You gotta put a little bass in voice. Shatter! You see a stream of musical notes come flying out of my loot into one consecutive spot, and they just erupt. Well, you hit the Minotaur only because he has disadvantage. Otherwise, Beautiful. they all fail their saves, and they're all killed. There's no more table. There's no more pews. There's no more paper. Right. There's no more food. There's no more windows. There's no more just doors. To, just assume that entire section of space is just flattened earth. And in conjunction with that, I use my inspiration on Kasurga. That's my turn. Grass bull, five footsteps here. You see its arm almost kind of like a machine changes out and turns into what looks more like a cannon with a harpoon fitted in it, oh, and he begins oh. firing at Kaz. Yes. Second opportunity. You can swing at him, Willie. He's going for it. Wow. Yes. Uh, Willie, you crumple the Minotaur before it can begin <laughs> firing at Kaz and kill it. You save him from the barrage. The leader moves into Jack's space. He is different from the other cultists. He actually radiates magical energy. He appears, obviously, much more dangerous. And I need a dexterity saving throw. You just barely make the save, so you can choose to be pushed five feet back or to the side. Like, okay, uh, fine, fine, have the space. You see that right magical chains of energy rise out of the ground to match his wrists, and he makes a swing at you, Jack. That's a hit. You take 10 acid damage from Ow. evil chains, and that's the Ow, monster. What is this? Garrett. Hey, does that cultist take damage? Yes, yeah, so he ends his turn he there. He has to make a reflex he, save. He fails the save. Then so there's... It four damage. Jairus comes down the stairs. Now, he wouldn't have actually seen him come out, but he still thought there were other cultists there, so he doesn't even know these are new cultists. In that case, so I'm going to put the sphere there and attack the same cultist I've been trying to set on fire, so he would need to make another reflex save. And he As fails. He four more damage. He's wounded at this point. How about an Eldritch Blast for 11 damage, too, while we're at it? The 17 is a hit. 11 damage. He is near death. Well, good day, gentlemen, and I'm going to go back upstairs. There's... And that is my turn. Jareth, Jack, your turn. Okay, uh, Spooky, I'm cursing you. This is your problem now, not mine. 22. Learn personal space, you ass barrel! He actually looks at least wounded by it. And is it your turn, Jack? Yeah, that's my turn. Willie, your turn. Well, I'm so. gonna kill these guys. Get them out the way. Well, that's a hit. That is a miss. Yep. Is that your turn, Willie? Yep. Okay. Kaz, you're up. Kaz flies overhead and lands on the other side here. Draws the lightning power from within and sends it down his arm, summons a whip of lightning, and uses lightning whip. Wonderful damage, if it hits. Fails, so he gets moved five feet and takes one, one lightning damage. damage. <laughs> it doesn't look particularly hurt by the damage. Wait, then, I have that thing. What, what do I roll, one? Rish? D6. He up. dealt two <laughs> damage. So that's your turn, Kaz? Yeah, I really don't want to waste all my stuff right now. Okay, Sibo. Alrighty. I leveled my loot at him. I play a note and I say, freeze! And I cast whole person on him. Use. Fails, he's held again. That's my turn, yeah. Proceed to beat the piss out of him. All hits are crit. He gets a will save at the end of his turn, which he passes. He's no longer held. He doesn't get to do anything else. Oh, and then he takes damage for ending his turn next to the flaming spear. So. Well, then six damage. Okay, Jareth, your turn. Come down the stairs once more. You're still here. I'll have to make another reflex save. I actively hit him with the flaming sphere. He fails it. Well, there's seven damage. All right. He is looking for the injured battle. And there's an Eldritch Blast. 19 hits. Well, force damage. I said good day. Jack, your turn. He said good day, sir. Why are you still here? Of course, it's a natural one. Uh, anything else, Jack? Nah, I'm good. Okay. Willie. Well, I missed twice. The second attack is a miss. So, Willie, you miss, miss, move. Anything else with your turn? No, nope, that's it. Okay. Kaz, your turn. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Since Willie got his attention, I'm going to sneak up behind 
behind him. Cass is going to, while he's distracted, get behind him. You'll see the lightning surge through his arm. And he's just going to go lightning punch. That's a hit. He used a freaking nine volt battery on his tongue. <laughs> My actual fist, if I were to just punch him, would do one point of damage. <laughs> Anything else with your turn, Cass? I could do more. I am just going to shift back to get out of the range of the heat of that sphere. All right, Zebo, <laughs> your turn. Very good. All right, I will attack him with the crossbow. I level it and I fire. Hit, so six five. points of damage. Five, only five. All right, Zebo, your turn's done. That's it. All right, Willy. Yeah. The mob is going to move into Willy's space. He needs dexterity saving throw. Oh, for the love of Keanu Reeves. All right. On a failed save, the cleric enters Willy's space and Willy takes 10 acid damage and is wrapped in glowing chains. The chained creature can't breathe, is restrained, and takes acid damage at the start of the cleric's next turn. When the cleric moves, the chained creature moves with it. The chained creature can try to escape by taking an action to make a strength check. On success, oh. the creature escapes to move within a square within five feet of their choice. That's the cleric's turn. Jareth, your turn. Oh, now you're messing with Willie. That's a mistake. I'm going to slam with the fireball once again. Willie okay. are sharing the space with the cleric, so you must also make a reflex save. Oh, no. So he fails the save, he takes six damage. Yeah. Yes, it's only going to be six damage either way, and I'll heal you up afterwards. All right, I'm just going to let him rip with a guiding bolt then. There you go. Yes, he is near death. And that's Jareth's turn. Jack, you'll have advantage on this attack, Jack. Oh, I know. 20's a hit. Ooh, 17 damage. All right. The cleric is dead. Now, recall, the cleric had moved into Willie's space, wrapped Willie in chains, and was beginning to, like, suffocate punish him him. with, yeah, suffocate him with his arcane energy. Basically, Jack slashes one more time with his scythe, cuts down the cleric, the chains drop off Willie, and as they drop off Willie, they instead wrap around the cleric and drag him down to the ground and through it and the cleric is gone. Now I'm going to get the hell out of this spot as quick as possible. <laughs> Do we want to barricade ourselves in one of these rooms quick and bandage our wounds for a short while? Well, let's take a quick peek around and make sure the coast is clear. Then, if we don't think we've alerted anyone else, and that was the, the whole kit and caboodle, then maybe it's safe and we can take a short rest. So, at this point, you all know that the immediate danger has passed. Um, you don't see any cultists in the immediate vicinity. So you may look around the stronghold. Do these cultists uh, have anything on them? Ah, yes. So the loot from that fight. There's what you get behind. from searching the chapel and the bedroom back here. And Willie, when you were near the chapel earlier, you detected there was a door hidden behind the statue of the walk-end goddess. You're going to have to move the statue to get to the door. Straight yep. save. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you shove the walk-end statue out of the way. Jack, when he shoves it past you, you realize for the ease of his shoving that there's no way this was made exclusively of precious metals. The statue itself is probably just coated in a foil and is otherwise worthless. Oh, great. As that's Willie cool. shoves the statue out, out of the way, he, he shows you that he found a door behind the statue. Huh. Shall we? Uh, you want me to a... do an athletics check, see if I can bust the door open? Yeah. Yeah, let's have you charge the door with a shoulder check. Good enough. Willie pretends he's on cops and he busts the door open. You see that there are several magical circles inscribed on the ground. It's clearly part of some kind of ritual, but you would have to use a relevant skill, perhaps, to determine more. I would surmise Arcana could get to the bottom of this. All right. I'm going to send a message to Sibo and one to... Jareth. I have deduced this has something to do with conjuration magic, some sort of summoning. Yes, I have deduced the same thing. You seem to know your way around portals. Uh, Sibo, additionally, you think that if you were able to somehow locate a black coin, it might be related in some way. Because I know you have something related to artifacts, so as a bonus, you do know that a black coin is probably used to interact with this somehow. Wish me luck. I grab my necklace, rip it off my neck, you, and step onto the portal. So you try to rip the necklace off, Sibo, but it's almost like it was glued directly to your skin. You can't even get a grip on it. It just won't move. You can't take it off. <laughs> Further, when you step on the scrawlings, you smear them with your feet, smearing the circles. Good job, Sibo. <laughs> oh, I figured out a lot more problems than just that. Oh, boy. Are you done almost getting yourself killed? Anybody got a fork? I'll be right back. 
Isn't there an upstairs? Yes. To get you upstairs, you come up the stairs there, Jareth. Jareth, since you were the first to go upstairs, yeah. you do find the diary of your stronghold commander. You find out that he was known as Tabulator 8128, and you see that his primary mission was to eventually come reinforce the city of Saltspire and basically siege anyone they needed to get out of the city. And the journal describes that they were supposed to sail to the island and there was a shipment of cannons, cannonballs, and powder they were going to use to blast the island apart before they came and sieged the island. And does port. this overlook like the, the rest of the settlement? Yeah. Do they look like on alert? Do we see anybody else coming this way? Do ah, we... yeah, no. As of right now, no one appears to be aware you've just killed the commander. I know it's safe now, so I can come back down and we can discuss the plan. We should, we should take a short rest. So, you. are you guys doing the short rest? I thought we were continuing. What are we doing? Okay. Sounds okay. like you guys want to continue. Jack, in the courtyard, or what you see outside the main keep, is two wagons prepared with cannons. There's not animals hitched to them. Yeah. And then there's a building here next to the cannons. You're not sure what that building is. And then you see a number of tents set up out in the courtyard. Just kind of walk back over there. Anyone else notice the cannons outside the door over there? No. Yeah, they have cannons heard up in wagons, like just outside the door. I thought the plan was to go back in the tunnels and then go into the warehouse. I feel like once we use a cannon, that's everybody knows. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's always something you could come back to use before you leave, since they still don't know you're here. Yeah, but it's not nearly as exciting. Oh yeah, all that excitement did me wonders. Yes, Willie is covered in excitement, referring to the acid. <laughs> you make it sound so dirty. Well, I'm also at half hit points, so Fine, kinda... Fine, take care of the warehouse the safe way before I go have my fun. So what I'm hearing is everybody wants to leave the stronghold and the group would like to go back through the tunnels to the warehouse. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And you are not taking a short rest, correct? Not yet. So you come out of another cavern lower, you know, at, at almost sea level and into like a small swamp. And from across the swamp, you can see that there's a cluster of warehouses. The loading docks for Skyreach Island have a mass of disorganized crates and fabric tents hastily hung to cover the punishing daytime sun. But in the darkness of the evening, the docks are devoid of signs of light. All right. You guys are in the warehouse across the way. So this direction, you see the main warehouse that you're likely here to destroy. It's kind of suspicious how empty this place is. Is it not lit in here? No, there's very few torches up, just like enough that if you were looking around, you could see. Like if you were a guard on sentry duty, you could sort of get a sense of the area, but that's about it. There's no other lights. There's no people. You really, since you came from the cave to the swamp, you haven't seen any on patrol yet. Well, we have two options. You either sneak around or I just light this whole place up. I'd prefer if you didn't well, do that. And you see someone step out from behind a crate. Good evening, gentlemen. The cult knew somebody would be coming from DeRay. So the tabulator hired us to find that somebody. Now I know it's you. So I see that the tabulator's dead. That's good. How'd you even know who was dead? I have my ways. What I just said now. And you just confirmed it. You did yeah. the smart thing and you went for the commander of the island first. That's what I'd have done. Now you're here to get the warehouse and the supplies next. Makes sense. It's what I'd do. Um, who are you, friend? He laughs at the word friend. Oh, I'm not your friend. I'm not ever going to be your friend. My name is Turok. The tabulator on Saltspire wants you dead. We're here to kill you. Please don't attack us, because then we'll have to kill you. I don't want to do that. I don't see why we couldn't just go our separate ways. You don't need to be involved here. You see, he starts cracking his knuckles and his bones, stretching his body out in yeah, almost yeah, unnatural yeah, yeah. poses. Yeah. That's really cute, little guy, that you think you're gonna hurt me. But I'll give you a choice. You're here to destroy okay. that warehouse, huh? Maybe. I don't give a fuck about this place. You want some help setting the warehouse on fire first? I think we can manage on our own, but I appreciate the offer. He whistles, and you see from a distance, flames reach the entire warehouse within seconds. Then you see the flames hop from the warehouse. Literally, the flames hop from the warehouse across the barrels, across the way, leaving little spots spikes of flame as it goes. You've got a choice, friends. I'm gonna let you walk away right now. I mm. think that's a great offer, seeing as there's not much for us here okay, anymore so anyways. What's the payment you want? I'm coming for you. One way or another, you're going to have to 
fight me. And I'm going to offer you the chance to do it now or when I see you back on Saltspire. It's your choice. Our tabulator doesn't care when you die, just that you die. I'll show you the hand that we're dealing with. Has Several things happen. You all see several monsters begin to come. They look sort of vaguely like velociraptors, but they're not. They're clearly undead. And they're being led by a woman over there. I related to the group. I whispered to them. I said, we're outmatched here. When that happens, a person attacks Kaz. What the woman fuck? woman leaps out from the shadows and screeches at Kaz and stabs him with a dagger, uh, dropping him to one hit point. As she stabs you, she screams the thrill of the hunt, and you know that voice like no other voice you've ever known. She was on that ship. She was the one who stabbed your captain. Turok yells, Lady, down! You see she licks the dagger with Kaz's blood and just sort of winks at him and slowly walks backwards past all of you, exposing her back, not even, like, worried. Walks back to Turok like a dog and stands behind him. Our friend is bleeding the fuck out. We need to leave. You want to fight me now or back on Saltspire? It would appear the consensus is we'll have to put this little foray on hold. It has been a blast. Lady, kill the ship in the back. You see Turok sprouts a pair of black shadowy tendrils out of his back and ascends into the air, not quite flapping, but sort of flying and takes off into the night. And the rest of his group, the dinosaurs and them recede into the evening as well. That's where we're going to stop for the evening. Yep. So we are going to wrap this up for tonight. If you watch this to the end, thank you so much. If you like what you saw, you can always hit that subscribe button down below. All right. Have a great night, everyone.